you're saying that the models need to be reviewed by this body and those models, if they're run on a third party set of servers, if they're need run to in be the vetted. wild. Right. So if they're Outside running on the your open, computer on the on the open internet, Freeberg, you yeah. cannot run an app on your computer. You know that, right? It needs to be connected to the internet, right? Like if you wanted to run an auto GPT, it actually crawls the internet. It actually touches other APIs. It tries yeah. to then basically send a push request, sees what it gets back, parses the JSON, figures out what it needs to do. All of that is allowed because it's hosted by somebody, right? That code is running, not locally, but, but I it's running. Locally. So the host becomes. Sure, if you want to run it locally, you can do whatever you want to do. But evil agents are going to do that, right? So if I'm an evil agent, I'm not going to go use AWS to run my evil agent. I'm going to set up a bunch minute, of servers and connect the it to the internet. How? I could use VPNs. I, I, the, the internet is open. There's open yeah, packets of data that fly around. If you're talking about people who are in yeah. another rogue country, they can do whatever they want. I think that what you're going to see is that if you, for example, try to VPN and run it out of like Tajikistan back to the United States, it's not going to take years for us to figure out that we need to IP block rando shit coming in, push and pull requests from all kinds of IPs that we don't trust anymore because we don't now trust the regulatory oversight that they have for code that's running from those IPs that are not US domesticated Just to, IPs. Uh, let me steal, man, Chamath's position for a second. Jason, hold on. I, I think the ultimate, if, if what Chamath is saying is the point of view of Congress, and if, if Chamath has this point of view, then there will certainly be people in Congress that will adopt this point of view. The only way to ultimately do that degree of regulation and restriction is going to be to restrict the open internet. It is going to be to have monitoring and firewalls no. and safety protocols across the open internet. Because you can have a set of models running on any set of servers, sitting in any physical location, and as long as they can move data packets around, they're going to be able to get up to their nefarious activities. Yes, you're correct. The, the internet has existed in a very open way. But there are organizations and there are places like the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. If I were to steal Manchamat's position, if you want to manufacture a car and uh, you want to make one in your backyard and put it on your track and on your land up in Napa somewhere, and you don't want to have brakes on the car and you don't want to have, you know, a speed limiter or airbags or seatbelts, and you want to drive on the hood of the car, you can do that. But once you want it to go on the open road, the open internet, you need to get you need to submit it for some safety standards, like NHTSA, like Tesla has to or Ford has to. So Sachs, where do you sit on this? Or is Let's assume that people are going to do very bad things with very powerful models that are becoming available. Amazon today said they'll be Switzerland. They're going to put a bunch of LLMs and other models available on AWS, Bloomberg's LLM, Facebook's, Google Bard, and of course, ChatGPT, OpenAI, and Bing. All this stuff's available. To have access to that, do you need to have some regulation of who has access to those at scale powerful tools? Should there be? some FDA or NHTSA? I don't think we know how to regulate it yet. I think that's too early. Clearly, and I clearly. think the harms that we're speculating about, we're making the AI more powerful than it is. And I believe it will be that powerful, but I think that it's premature to be talking about regulating something that doesn't really exist yet. Take the, the chaos GPT scenario. The way that would play out would be, you've got some future incarnation of auto GPT and somebody says, okay, auto GPT, I want you to be you know, WMD AI and figure out how to cause like a mass destruction event, you know, and then it creates like a planning checklist and that kind of stuff. So that's basically the, the type of scenario we're, we're talking about. Um, we're not anywhere close to that yet. I mean, the chaos GPT is kind of a joke. It doesn't hmm. produce, it doesn't produce a checklist. I can give an anything. example that would actually be completely plausible. One of the first things on the chaos GPT's checklist was to stay within the boundaries of the law because it didn't want to get prosecuted. Got it. So the person who did that had some sort of good intent, but I can give you an example right now that could be done by ChatGPT and AutoGPT that could take down large swaths of society and cause massive destruction. I'm almost reticent to say it here. Say it. Uh, well, I'll say it and then maybe we'll have to delete this, but if somebody created this and they said, uh, figure out a way to compromise as many powerful peoples and as many systems passwords then go in there and delete all their files and turn off as many systems as you can chat gpt and auto gpt could very easily create phishing accounts create billions of websites of to create course. billions of logins have people log into them get their 100%. passwords log into whatever they do and then delete everything in their accounts J which J would Cal cause chaos you're and right it could be done today i don't think it can be done today simpler than this how about how about you fish you them can't and create just a phishing website yeah pieces of it can be created today but you're you're accelerating the progress. 
Yeah, but you can automate by spear what? phishing now days, to an 30 art. days? Yeah, exactly. And by the I way, think I'm accelerating it in weeks. Why don't you just spoof the bank accounts and just steal the money? Like that's even simpler. Like people will oh do God. this stuff because they're trying to do it today. Holy cow. Now they just have a more efficient way to solve I didn't the problem. Even think about bank accounts. So look, Jeez. So number one, this is a tool. And if people use a tool in nefarious ways, you prosecute them. Number two, the platforms that are commercializing these tools do have trust and safety teams. Now, in the past, trust and safety has been a euphemism for censorship, which it shouldn't be. But, you know, OpenAI has a safety team and they try to detect when people are using their tech in a nefarious way and they try to prevent it. Do you if trust that team? Well, no, not on censorship, but I think that they're probably- 100 million people are using chat Do you think they're policing it? Are you willing to abdicate your or societal responsibility to to open AI to do the trust and safety? Well, what I'm what I'm saying is I'd like to see how far we get in terms of the system. Yeah, so you're yeah, so you're saying you want to see the mistakes. You want to see where the mistakes are and how bad the mistakes are. I'm saying it's still very early to be imposing regulation. We don't even know what to regulate. So I think we have to keep tracking this to develop some understanding of how it might be misused, how the industry is going to develop safety guardrails. Okay. And then you can talk about regulation. Look, you create some new FDA right now. Okay. First of all, we know what would happen. Look at the drug process. As soon as the FDA got involved, it slowed down massively. Now it takes years, many years to get a drug approved. Appropriately so. Yes. But at least with a drug, we know what the gold standard is. You run a double blind study to see whether it causes harm or whether it's beneficial. We don't know what that standard is for AI yet. We have no idea. You so, can so what's going to happen is a double blind a study in AI. What? No, we you don't know that. You have somebody review the code. You have two instances in a sandbox. Someone reviews the code to do what? No, Sachs. Listen, Sachs, no, 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 you have let me two finish different... my point. Auto GPT. It's benign. I mean, my friend used it to book a wine tasting. So who's going to review that code and then speculate and say, oh, well, in 99.9% .9 of cases, it's perfectly benevolent and fine and innocuous. There's but yeah. I can fantasize about some cases someone might do. How, hold on. How are you supposed to resolve that? Very simple. There are two types of regulation that concur in any industry. You can do what the movie industry did, which is they self-regulate and they came up with their own rating system. Or you can do what happens with the FDA and what happens with cars, which is an external government-based body. I think now is the time for self-regulation so that we avoid the massive heavy hand of government having to come in here. But these tools can be used today to create massive harm. They're moving at a pace, we just said in the first half of the show, that none of us have ever seen. Every 48 hours, something drops that is mind-blowing. That's never yeah. happened before. And you can take these tools, and in the one example that Chamath and I came up with at the top of our head in 30 seconds, you could create phishing sites, compromise people's bank accounts, take all the money out, delete all the files, and cause chaos on a scale that has never been possible by a series of Russian hackers or Chinese hackers working in a boiler room. This can scale. And that is the, the fundamental difference here. And I didn't think I would be sitting here steel manning Chamat's argument. I think humans have a horrible ability to compound. I think people do not understand compound interest. And this is a perfect example, where when you start to compound technology at the rate of 24 hours, or 48 hours, which we've never really had to acknowledge, most people's brains break, and they don't understand what six months from now looks like. And six months from now, when you're compounding at 48 or 72 hours, is like 10 to 12 years in other technology solutions. This is compounding. This is this is different because of the compounding. I agree with that. The pace of revolution is very fast. We are on a bullet train to something, and we don't know exactly what it is, and that's disconcerting. However, let me tell you what would happen if we create a new regulatory body like the FDA to regulate this. They would have no idea how to arbitrate whether a technology should be approved or not. Development will basically slow to a crawl, just like drug development. There is no double-blind standard. I agree. What hey, self-regulation can we do? What self-regulation can we do? There is no double-blind standard in AI that everyone can agree on right now to know whether something should be approved. And what's going to happen is the thing that's made software development so magical and allowed all this innovation over the last 25 years is permissionless innovation. Any developer, any dropout from a university can go create their own project which turns into a company. And that is what has driven all the innovation and progress in our economy over the last 25 years. So you're going to replace permissionless innovation with going to Washington to go through some approval process. And it will be the politically connected. It'll be the big donors who get their projects approved. And the next Mark Zuckerberg, who's trying to do his little project in a dorm room somewhere, will not know 
how to do that, will not know how to compete in that highly political process.